Hi there VC, happy new year. I hope everybody um, had a good Christmas and um, enjoyed themselves, celebrated with family and friends. Um, my Christmas was good. Um, new year wasn't so great. Um, I've ended up um, catching a, a cold, which laid me in bed over for New Year's Eve and most of New Year's Day. Um, I feel a lot better now, thank you. Um, Though I have managed to also tweak, put me back, well, pull a muscle in me back as well. So if you see me wince a couple of times it's just, during this video, it's just purely that. Um, this video is top 10 finds of 2022. Um, we're, and we're just going to show 10 albums, but it's sort of like 10 artists that, are fat, are fat, that did well. I think 2022 was actually quite a good year. I didn't spend much on new records. I thought it was like, um, focused more on, on sort of like, um, stuff that came into the shop. Um, you know, you know sort of filling gaps in collections. So without further ado, let's start off with the first one. And I um, found The Idle Race. This is Light at the End of the Road. It's a compilation uh, that came out on the I Can See for Miles label. Idle Race stuff on vinyl is very, very, um, it's very hard to find. Uh, it's very expensive. I mean, I've got a um, birthday party on a Sunset reissue from the 70s. Um, so I was really pleased to pick this up. So, you know, all know The Idle Race, Jeff Lynne's band, um, um, prior to joining the move and then electric light orchestra um very much highly rated birmingham band They're just unlucky not to get hit singles so yeah i was just listening um, before i um started recording this video to the podcast the history of rock music in 500 songs episode episode 160 actually goes on about roy wood well it's more about it it focuses the song is flowers in the rain by the move and it's going on about roy wood primarily but obviously huge mention to jeff lynn as well so yeah it was well worth uh, listening to it's worth if you haven't heard it history of rock music in 500 songs is a good podcast it's really it's well well thought out there are long episodes but stick with it just before christmas i found this um gentle giant three friends um Again, Gentle Giants, act. it's difficult to find. Um, I know the albums were reissued. This is on, released on vertical, though it's not a vertical swirl. Um, you have to apologise for the glare there. Um, yeah, that's better. Um, their third album, uh, studio album. It's a concept album based on three friends um, who grow up together, but their lives go on different paths. And... They um the, the cold tantalizing thing about the album is you never know if that's actually the friends actually meet up again. Um it's got, it's, it's a very very good prog album. Um yeah, it leaves that little bit hanging on, you're not sure, and the band's never let on whether that's the case, not that I've read. Also around the same time before Christmas, I found this as well. Um the groundhogs. Who will save the world? The mighty groundhogs. Um, Seventy two. Uh, this came out. I think it's got to the top ten in the UK. Um, groundhogs. Um, I, it's a band I've grown to love over the years. I never really was aware of them until I started shopping at Psychotron. Uh, Pete pointed out. I've got split. I've got a couple of their albums, uh, but this was the one that stood out. And it's this was not at a bad price, so um, I could, couldn't wait to get get hold of that. So that's another fine. These finds are in no particular order. Um, again, it's literally just before Christmas I found this. Reckless Eric's debut album, Reckless Eric's, came out in 1978. Reckless Eric, um, a sort of underrated um, singer-songwriter, um, came up on the stiff tour of Ian Jury and um, Elvis Costello, but... Um, he sort of fell, fell, fell behind. He still goes. And I know one of the groups I'm in, somebody says he's a Facebook friend. But some really great songs on here. Reson, Resonate, Cherie and Whole Wide World are the two best known songs on here. This is just a good little good little album, songwriter album, and with a little bit of attitude to it. Um, and I love the touch there. And it's a typical stiff touch. 69 and 11. 
Um, God knows what that works out to, but um, by the time this came out, we were no longer in um, in Imperial. We've gone well past uh, decimal. Uh, Gil Scott Heron, the revolution will not be televised. This is a sort of comp. It's a reissue of a comp that came out. I think it's 73. Obviously, the my own track is the title track. I've got no Gil Scott Heron vinyl in, 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 at all, not in CD, in CD. So it's, um, I was pleased to find this. You know, and it's certainly an artist I go up and going to have a look out for in the, in the future. One of the things I was really pleased to find this year, I found a fair few Fleetwood Mac albums. Um, we're not talking, you know, Pete Green. We're not even talking Lindsay Buckingham. This is the period in between um, that, that those two successful periods where the band sort of was trying to develop their own sound post Pete Green, but so sort of, and ended up moving to the states. Um, so and obviously we lost um, Christine McVie recently. Um, grew up around Stetchford, Bearwood in Birmingham. Um, so I got Kiln House there. Um, that was the only album that featured Jerry, uh, post Peter Green album that featured Jeremy Spencer. Um, Future Games. Bear Trees. Mystery to me, and heroes are hard to heroes are hard to find. And this would be the last album that featured Bob Welsh um, before he left, and then after that, uh, Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham joined the band. Um, the only album from that period now I can't haven't got is um, Penguin, and that's a quite a difficult album to find. Um, I think there's been a reissue, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was pretty pleased to find those, you know, there's a, that, that gap, oh, again, oh, it, was a, it was a gap that I wasn't aware of, you had Pete Green, and then you had Buckingham and Nicks, but to discover them, some really good songs on there, you could see the direction they were going, particularly Christine McVie, um, sad loss, um, but hey, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's one of the pitfalls, isn't it, I, I know it's my record collection is literally dying, <laughs> Another band I found a couple of albums by is Fanny. This is their, I think their second album, Fanny Hill. Uh, this was recorded at Apple Studios um, in 1971, came out the following year. I discovered Fanny through YouTube, um, clips on Beat Club. Um, and it's on one of the tracks here, they do a cover of uh, Lennon McCartney's um, Hey Bulldog. Um, absolutely wouldn't if you get go go on beat club channel this beat club was a german um pop program in the 60s it was very pop but in the 70s early 70s it was very rock orientated and live performances really good you know proved that it could play as well as any any man group um yeah some really nice really good songs really good album i'd already got um found one, one funny album and then on the same patch when i found that I found this, the follow-up to Fanny Hill, which is Mother's Pride. Um, and this would be the last album, really, to feature sort of like the classic lineup. Um, I think Alex the Burt, and I think it's uh, June Millington left after after this after this album. Um, it's said M M Mother's Pride is something to do with the Millington sisters, Pride and the Mother. But I read somewhere Nicky Bartley said, no. Nah, because we'd spend a lot of time in England, we noticed there was a, bre a brand, brand of bread called Mother's Pride, which is true. You don't see it as much now, but it was very popular in the 70s. Again, another another good album. Um, band that I am very fond of is Slide. And I managed to find a couple of lesser known the 70 albums. Nobody's Fool. Um, Nobody's Fool, sorry. Um, this I think it might have been the last one uh, connected with Polydor it's got on here uh, let's call it quits in for a penny um, 
And this is really right at the point where the band was starting to, their popularity was going. Um, they were spending a lot of time in America at, at this point. And much, t- and glam rock was out. Um, I mean, they were more always more than that. They just got associated with the look. And um, they sort, sort of like, sort of disappeared um, a little bit. And then they, as they spent more time, they came back. And then recorded this album, Whatever Happened to Slade. This came out, I think it's 78. And this is on the Barn label. I think it might have something to do with Polydor. I'm not, I'm not too sure. But um, by the time they come out back, they were totally forgotten. When this album came out, this album was forgotten. This album can be quite expensive to find. Um, again, some nice nice songs, but it, it, it does sound like a band that's been in America a long time. So yeah, please please again find that. Um I found in a charity shop. Um well found a couple of Scott Walker albums. This is Scott two. Um got on here Jackie Next. Um a lot of Jack Braille songs on here. Um Scott Walker's sort of like got mythical status for this, some of these albums. Um so I was pleased to pick that up an original copy. But probably the most one of the most um, pleasing finds was the final copy of Scott Four. Now on the label, it doesn't call it Scott Walker, but this time he stopped even calling himself Scott Walker. And he was so up so up his own backside at that point. He he referred it back to his um uh, original name. So the label says Scott Engel. Um so Scott Four. Um very much, and he's got quoting Camus at the back. And yeah, you know, I mean, um, I think he was, in a way, he was, I'm not sure if he was trying to destroy everything that made him a star. Now, I know it sat, sat uncomfortable at being it's like that's not what he wanted. The reason he came into Europe so he could get, you know, feel that um, bohemian lifestyle which he so, so much craved. And yeah, in, in a way, it, in a way, this sort of destroyed his career, this album. Um, but it's it, it's one of those albums where you listen to it afterwards and you think, ah, oh, this is not too bad. This is quite good, um, but it, it's not very commercial. You know, as I say, this is sort of like commercial suicide note. So yeah, I was pleased to find it at that this year. Um, and finally, a band that I've, I've, I've struck lucky on eBay with this particular band. Um, I found albums by them. At not too unreasonable price, they can be very expensive, especially some originals. Um, so, the first thing that I found was I found, found me a copy of Bad Fingers Magic um, Christian Music, um, sort of like the debut album of Bad Finger. I think there was that Ivy's album that came out. It's got some production by Tony Visconti on here. Uh, Got come and get it um, on it on here. It's, it's, it's pretty much at the time, wrong. I think wrong, um, wrong Griffiths had left the um, band and been kicked out of the band. So even though Joey Molland had joined, he wasn't officially on the on on the album. Um, so yeah, pleased to find that. This is an, uh, I think it's a Canadian copy. I've got I've got that on eBay. Well, that said, the price wasn't too bad on there. Um, yeah, but very good oh, hint of promise there. And then, after, just long after that, an album that I think I've shown, but I found this, and this was at a ridiculous, I won this auction at a ridiculous price. Um, next time I saw it, the price on this was going for a couple hundred quid. I got it for about 30 quid. I won, you know, t- with eBay, timing is, I suppose, is key here. Uh, straight up. Um, this is a 1993 re-edition, a uh, reissue. So you've got the basic album on side on on record one, and record two is the sort of stuff that, that um, George Harrison had worked on. George Harrison had um, was going to be the original producer uh, of the album and did start working on tracks, and it um, turned out that. Um, time the Bangladesh thing um, sort of held, held at the project. Um, I played this album, um, I think called Off the Record, and 
and we did the theme of I did the chose the theme of shafted because uh, I think everyone knows the story of Bad Finger and how things had gone wrong for him. Um, and it's from this point really when the band's career started to go down. Um, it's a great album, one of my favourite albums for all time. Um, then on eBay, I know like, what I do is just typed in Bad Finger vinyl and then came up and I found a one auction for this. I, and how I do it is I just put uh, no dice. And again, this is a Canadian copy. All I do is I have a set limit and that's it. If somebody beats me, beats me, well, fair play to them. Um, no dice, probably the birth of Power Pop on this album. You've got uh, different different times with the cover, by the way. Uh, no, no matter what's on here, the original version without is on here. It's just really good. This is a joint produced by Jeff Emmerich. Joey Mullins put on this. You've got three vocalists. You, you couldn't see at that point. I suspect if you were around that point, you couldn't see what could go wrong for the band. Patronage by Harrison, you know, created by the Beatles. You know, the Beatles had the final say so on who signed for, for Apple. If they didn't like it, you didn't get on. If one member didn't like it, you didn't get on. And then finally, and I can't believe I've only paid 16 quid for this. This is Badfingers Wish You Were Here. This is their um, the final album on Warner Brothers. Um, produced by Chris Thomas. Um, it sort of got withdrawn as pretty much as soon as it got released. Um, and as I say, it, 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 the band, Warner Brothers ended up suing the band. Basically, Stan Polly, off of mine and, and Gather, was he forever was getting the band to record because record label would give them an advance which the band never saw because he just paid them a weekly wage which Polly seemed to pocket it and um whatever Polly or Polly or whatever um so this sort of so to find this um UK for about 15 16 quid I was more more than happy and then the final thing I ain't got got it hasn't arrived yet but just before Christmas I won I won the auction to buy the self-titled Badfinger album so yeah looking forward to receiving that should come in the next couple of days um so yeah I'll be happy to receive that so there you go VC those were my top finds for 2022 um, I've seen a few videos where people have, have done it and uh, you know it's, it, I think we've all had a bit of a successful year this coming year, times are tough. Um, sort of prioritising what to do. And I'm having to think about where I'm going with my music buying, with what I've got, to be honest. Uh, I have hit the age-old problem of space. Um, but um, that, I can discuss that in another video. So whatever you get up to VC today, VC, or this week, VC, look after yourselves and keep spinning. Um, more importantly, keep on smiling. <laughs>